video, I'm going to go over, from start to finish, a potential route to getting your first role as a healthcare data analyst. Most people believe that all you need to get a job in the health informatics field is a relevant degree, but the truth is you should get some form of experience. Generic advice would be get a relevant degree at any college or university in computer science or health informatics. And then when you get out, you'll just be magically be able to get a role. This might have been the case in the past, but these days the job market is challenging to say the least. And a degree is not a guarantee that you'll get a role in your desired field. However, a degree in addition to other factors might significantly increase your chance of getting an entry level role in this field. Before spending thousands of dollars on any program, you'll want to do a significant amount of research before committing to this program. And herein lies the roadmap to getting your first role in health informatics. So step number one, as I've listed here, you want to identify key skills. And these are key skills that are listed in current healthcare analyst job roles that you can find on LinkedIn or Indeed. And then determine if the degree program you want to apply to will teach you these skills. If you look at enough job postings, you'll see some of the common soft and technical skills requested for healthcare data analyst roles are knowledge of SQL programming language to query relational databases, experience with visualization tools such as Power BI, Tableau, Click, experience working with large clinical data sets, including manipulating, maintaining, preparing data, and presenting analysis and reports for different technical and non-technical audiences and the ability to work independently and in teams. Therefore, when searching for a degree program, you want to read up on the course syllabus and see if in the course description, you'll be taught how to write SQL queries, database concepts, and data visualization skills using up-to-date tools, such as Power BI and Tableau. You should do your due diligence to make sure you'll be learning tools that are used in industry and not tools that are specific to academia or are outdated. Another tip is to reach out to alumni of the program on LinkedIn because oftentimes these programs will highlight past students. Ask them if you can have a few minutes of their time to see what they thought about the value of the program they took. How long did it take them to find a job in their field? And if they felt the program advisor was helpful in their job search? I've received several questions and comments from listeners of the Health Analytic Insights podcast, which I run, he went through these expensive degree programs, but eventually struggled to find jobs because advisors would not help them or left them completely on their own. Obtaining your degree is a huge time and cost investment these days. And unless you want to remain in academia and eventually become a professor, the outcome of going to school should be to find a job. So you want to optimize your time as much as possible by learning things that will be relevant during a job interview. Now, moving on to step 2A or 2B. Now, if you already have prior experience, you might want to follow um, this route. And if you're pivoting into this field, you might want to try and find ways to job shadow. For example, you might have prior experience working as a clinician, project manager, or business analyst, and you want to pivot into the healthcare data analyst role or the health informatics field. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the first option be to immediately go get another degree, as you might already have existing key transferable skills that can help you to pivot into this field. In this scenario, you might need to work on expanding your network and self-learning any technical skills you might be missing. For example, if you already have a background as a data analyst in the hospitality industry, the skills you might have used to analyze large amounts of data might be relevant as a healthcare data analyst. If you previously worked as a project manager in another industry, your skills might be transferable when implementing a new electronic health record system at a hospital. In this situation, you might just need to learn how to write basic SQL queries or learn Power BI. This might be done by reaching out to a coworker in your existing organization who might work in the business intelligence or decision support department and asking them how best to learn these skills.
Moving to step 2b, if you don't have any prior experience or any clinical experience, your focus might be on learning the technical skill gap. So once you've determined you have a technical skill gap, based on what common skills are listed in the healthcare data analyst role, remember it's important to you know, look at current roles today, what's being shown on LinkedIn and Indeed, and then fill this gap. And again, you can do this by attending a degree program, making sure that it will teach you these skills by doing your due diligence, or you can also consider self-learning. So I'll leave a list of resources that I have found helpful to self-learn these skills, such as SQL and Power BI in the description box of this video, which you can check out. And one of the best ways to learn and retain information, instead of just passively reading it from a textbook or even watching a YouTube video, is to practice the skills you're learning. This is why I would suggest bridging this gap by creating a project that has you practicing these technical skills. When I was developing my technical skills in this area, what I found missing was a lack of online courses highlighting a clinical problem. For example, determining readmission rates back to hospital. There are several analytical courses out there, but I couldn't find anything that could help me gain experience working with a clinical data set so that I could practice my technical skills and build a portfolio project that'd be relevant for hiring managers during the healthcare data analyst interview. After years of experience in this field, I ended up creating the course, learn the skills to get your first role as a healthcare analyst, which helps you to create an analytical project from start to finish while getting exposed to common clinical metrics in the field. So this is an overview of the roadmap if you already have prior experience or if you don't have any experience. And so to summarize, if you already have prior experience, I wouldn't necessarily right away jump into getting a degree. Make sure to take inventory of your previous skills and see how these skills that you have might be transferable to this role. Also, you might want to reach out in your current organization if there's a clinical decision support team or just a general business intelligence team to learn more about technical skill gaps and how to fill them. If you don't have any prior clinical experience or technical experience, make sure that the degree program that you're considering is worth it by looking at current job roles in the field and making sure that you'll be learning the skills that you need to get a job. Now moving on, the next step into the roadmap is to prepare for the interview. Once you feel confident in your now developed technical and soft skills, you're ready to prepare your resume and get ready for the interview. When it comes to the main body of your resume, make sure to use action verbs to highlight any previous work experience or project work you have done. For instance, including examples of your work experience using quantitative data. For example, I created reports and dashboards for the emergency department, which helped to reduce patient readmission rates by 20% and highlight ways you have made significant difference at your previous organization. If you have no experience in this field, try to highlight any relevant skills, capstone projects, or courses you have completed, which showcase your passion for advancing in the field. You can do this at the top of your resume in the resume summary section, and also in your cover letter. Relevant internships or co-op experience can go above your degree if your degree is unrelated to healthcare analytics. In the description box, I will also link to the previous video I did on some common interview questions you might receive during the healthcare analyst job interview so you can be better prepared. And finally, I'll end with this overview of the roadmap with step number four, always keep learning. This field is rapidly changing and keeping informed is important when it comes to the latest emerging trends, especially with how artificial intelligence will be integrated into the healthcare field in the future. Keep reading, listening to podcasts and subscribe to YouTube channels like this. I'll leave a link to my newsletter in a pinned comment where I provide regular monthly information on how to break into the field of health informatics and how to keep learning in the field. I hope this video is of value to you. Comment down below on where you are 
in the health informatics roadmap journey. Thanks so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.